didn't record. Okay. So in event fundraising, uh, one of my favorite topics, as it really is very important to your program. So uh, as a whole, in event fundraising is just really a huge opportunity for your program to take advantage of having a captive audience in your venue and to make one last one last push towards your goal um, or past your goal if you've already hit it, which is fantastic. Um, and really what I wanted to start off by talking about is like, why is an event fundraising important for your participants? So we know that it's important because we wanna hit our goals, but what does this do for their actual experience? And, um, you know, it really is something that can help enhance their experience by connecting them to the cause, by giving them that opportunity to fundraise and see the collective impact. So we talked about wanting to have that sense of belonging and that community and through an event fundraising that can really be demonstrated by showing that impact in like a tangible form, right? So we can, um, maybe they're not actually seeing the donations come through on donor drive, but by being around people who are collectively celebrating their fundraising impact, you feel that community, you feel that sense of belonging, um, as opposed to just kind of like participating in fun games, which is a great part of your marathon, but this can really be the piece that ties dance marathon and your event together and the impact that you're making on your community. It also is going to establish fundraising as being important, right? So a lot of times we go out and recruit and we talk about being a fundraising organization and then we have an event and this can really help demonstrate that it is important to us and it is a key part of our program to make sure that we're not only having a lot of fun, but we're also fundraising and making an impact again, makes it a little bit more than just an event, it can be a really um, distinguishing factor of your marathon as well, too. So as Kristen talked about, like, what makes us unique? What makes us impactful? Your fundraising and your impact is two of those things. It also, again, invites them to be part of something bigger. Um, and I personally think that in event fundraising can be a lot of fun. Um, you can do a lot of different things. You can get really creative. Um, this is a, a really unique part of what Dance Marathon looks like on a college campus or at your high school or whatever um, level of education you're within. Um, it can be a lot of fun and also just really bring everyone together. So I'm a big fan of internet fundraising for a lot of reasons. Um, first, we're going to talk about kind of planning for in event fundraising, and then we're going to talk about the actual execution. So um, planning ahead is very important. You, if you have a February marathon, you should already be talking about an event fundraising. Um, you should already have some plans in place or draft plans in place if you're maybe March or April. Um, it's never too early to start talking about this because of how important it is to your event experience and to make sure that you're getting enough time during the marathon to fundraise, um, that there's a good balance of events and activities and fundraising. So definitely making sure that you're beginning to have these conversations now is going to be really important. Um, and just to kind of level set what we're talking about, it's going to be important to incorporate both active and passive fundraising. So um, in this case, active fundraising is what we refer to as like your main stage asks. So anyone's going to go on stage and be like, we're trying to raise $5,000 in the next hour um, and actually make an ask for you to do something. Passive fundraising, also super important to your marathon experience because it's going to help you keep revenue rolling while you're doing different activities, um, while maybe people aren't directly sending out asks to friends and family. So this can look like raffles, selling merchandise, pay to play things so like pying people in the face or maybe playing certain games or going on obstacle courses or paying a dollar to play a song, things like that, um, that can help still generate revenue, but aren't necessarily what people may traditionally consider fundraising activities. And then incentives, also sort of in that passive category. So building an ask, if you um, attended DMLC this summer, this is gonna look really familiar to the event fundraising pr presentation we did there, um, but it's really important to put some thought and intentionality behind the asks that you're making at the marathon. So this is why we tell you to plan ahead because you're gonna wanna go through some of these things and think through um, the plan so that you walk into the marathon ready to execute these asks and you're not having to make it up on the fly. Um, I can guarantee you, you'll probably have some more success if you go in with a plan. Like we mentioned, you can be flexible with it, but 
there are five things on here that you really want to consider. So first one is the purpose of your ask. So what's the motivation behind this ask? Is it to connect people to the cause? Is it to have some friendly competition? Is it to raise a lot of money? Um, is it to reach our goal? Or is it just to focus on like getting people activated? So if there are a lot of people at your marathon that maybe walk in with having zero dollars fundraised, you know, a purpose of a fundraising ask can be for them to just make their first ask to get their first donation. So it can look a little bit different based off what your purpose is. Um, method, we just talked about active versus passive. So again, both of these really important to consider in your marathon. Um, also, you want to think about who is making the ask. Um, some of us are really comfortable on stage. Some of us are not comfortable speaking in public. Um, some people just do a better job of conveying the emotion and the, the feelings that you want to during a fundraising ask. So definitely something to, to consider is like, is it your MCs or are they really there to create the hype and excitement? Or is it maybe a miracle family who can make the ask if they're comfortable doing so after having told their story? Um, is it a maybe a student who had an experience with your local hospital, your fundraising chair? lots of different people who can be a part of this. Um, and the purpose of your ask should tie back into who is making it. So if you're really looking to like have that sentimental moment um, and bring people close to the cause, then it might be a good idea to have a miracle family make the ask. If you're trying to have a lot of fun and just activate people in fundraising and make this an exciting environment, then maybe your MCs or someone non-morale is a good person to make that ask. Um, timing is also really important to consider. So we recommend like every two to three hours, depending on how long your marathon is, that you make an active fundraising ask. Um, and when are they happening, right? So during opening ceremonies or right after it can be a good time because that's probably when most people are in a room and have, you know, the highest attention span. They just got there. They're excited. Um, but you can also plan it around other pieces of your marathon that might make sense. So again, those miracle family speakers or a hospital speaker or um, really anything else that makes sense for what your programming is. And then last thing that I think is really important is the engagement piece of your in event ask. So um, it's a little bit boring when you go up there, you make an ask and then you just kind of like walk off stage and everyone's just kind of like, so I'm just, just gonna fundraise. What do I do after I fundraise? Um, so what's that engagement piece? What do they do after they get a donation? Um, and how can you maybe make that cause connected? So that, can they go like sign a balloon and stick it on the wall? Can they go ring the bell? Um, can they like go pick up an incentive or something like that? So really thinking of like, what do they get when they do the thing that you've asked them to do? So I've got two examples to show you guys. Um, that can really just kind of help put those things into perspective um, with an actual example. So for those familiar with like the concept of a push hour or a power hour, this is probably a time where you're really focusing on hitting a goal or raising a lot of money in a certain hour. Um, so I won't walk you through every one of these because you will be able to, see, you can see them on screen, but this kind of demonstrates all the different puzzle pieces to think about as you're planning these push hours. Um, Lots of things you can tie in here, um, but you can see, you know, the purpose of this push is really going to drive the rest of your decision making. So for this one is specifically, we want to create excitement and energy. So again, we're going to have the MCs do it. Um, we really want to raise a lot of money. So we're going to do it in peak fundraising hours when people are maybe after dinner, hanging out um, on a Saturday or whatever day of your marathon it is. You probably don't want to do your biggest push hour in the middle of the night if you're an overnight marathon or late at night because people will have gone to sleep. So again, just these different pieces to consider. And, and this is just one example. Another one, um, for those familiar, light up the room, um, sort of an official name, um, but really is something where, you know, you can just inflict a little bit more emotion by asking participants to turn on their flashlight. Um, once they've either received a donation or made an ask and um, demonstrates a little bit more of that like calm, inspirational environment. If all the lights are off, people aren't as loud, they're not yelling. And so um, this one is a little bit more of that sentimental ask. So maybe we have the Miracle family do it um, and it's directly after the family speaks and we have you know internal team members walking around to steward people. So different purpose, different execution. You can see how the two look a little different, but ultimately are going to accomplish similar things through event fundraising. 
If you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the chat. So we've talked a little bit about like, those are the things you'll be doing before the marathon, right? So you're going to plan, you're going to put together this plan for execution that incorporate all those different fundamentals, and then we're actually going to execute it at the marathon. So setting the foundation for an event fundraising during the marathon, you really need to consider, does everyone here know where our funds are going and how our funds are making an impact? Because if they're new to dance marathon, or maybe they registered yesterday and your marathons today, they may have no idea what they're doing here, but their friend asked them to come. So making sure that you are taking the time to explain to them, what's the purpose of our marathon? What is the purpose of fundraising at our marathon? Where are the funds going? Is going to be key to make sure that they want to fundraise with you and that they feel inspired to fundraise with you. Secondly, do they know how to fundraise? Um, again, really important. It's going to be really hard for them to receive donations if they don't know how to find their link or they don't know how to fundraise um, or they don't know what they should be saying when they ask for a donation. So making sure that throughout the execution in event, you're taking the time to help them. And then do they have the necessary resources needed to be successful with in event fundraising? So um, again, a lot of times during marathons, some of these people are completely new to your program. Some of these people have returned. But if you're going to say, go out and raise $62, and they're like, I know how to do that, but maybe I don't know how to explain it, or I don't know what to say, um, or I'd love a graphic to go with that, making sure that they have the necessary things to be successful with fundraising and support in person as well, too. So thinking about all we just kind of talked about, breaking it down a little bit further, to successfully then have them actually fundraise at your marathon, these are five things that you should be doing. So this is all going to align with like the plan that you've put together. So you're going to start to kind of see where the puzzle pieces fit together. Some of this is going to be overlap, um, but they should be working in tandem each, with each other. So the plan you've made ahead of time should only help you be more prepared to execute in person. So as we just talked about, it's really important for your participants to know where their funds are going and, and what the impact is that they're making. So the first thing that you're going to, going to want to do is introduce or reintroduce them to the cause. So this could look like bringing a family on stage. This could look like inviting someone from the hospital to speak, having a member of your team share about where your funds are going. It's It seems really simple. And if you're like a president or maybe an older student, um, or an advisor on this call, you're like, that is basic, right? But it's so important because I can guarantee you, um, if you walked around your venue during your marathon and you just walked up to random people and said, hey, just curious, what children's hospital are we supporting? Some of them are going to get it wrong um, or not know because they just are there to hang out with their friends maybe, or they signed up yesterday. Again, just something that seems really basic, but I think we often take for granted is making sure that all of our participants are on the same page. So those are things that you can do first and then lead into actually making a clear ask and setting those expectations. So like we talked about, the purpose of your ask is gonna drive what you're actually doing and this can look really different. So asking participants to raise a certain amount of money, whether that's $100 in the next hour or um, per person or $5,000 collectively amongst everyone in this gym, um, asking them to do something specific is only going to help them understand what to do next. Because if you're just like, we're going to fundraise, they might just be like, okay, what do I do? And who do I ask? How much do I ask for? Um, it also gives them a really clear call to action for their donors. So they could reach out to a donor and say, hey, I was just challenged to raise $62 in the next hour. Can you help me by making a donation towards my fundraising efforts? Um, gives it a little bit more specific specifics, a little more urgency, um, will help them feel more confident and comfortable in actually executing that ask. And then um, ask them to send a text, call or email. Again, I think a lot of times people just kind of default to like, posting on their Instagram or maybe posting on social media. But if you can make an ask or a call to action, that's like text five family members and ask for a donation of $10. It's easy. It makes sense. If all five of them do it, they've raised $50. They can easily understand kind of how this helps reach their goal or the overall goal of the organization. Setting that time frame again, gives them 
a little bit more urgency. So they don't just go like wander off to have some food, but maybe they are like, okay, I really need to do this right now. So I'm going to take out my phone and start texting or calling people. And then like we talked about in that kind of principles piece, the engagement is kind of what they're going to do as a call to action once they've received a donation. Um, so it's going to be really important to make sure that they, one, feel inspired to fundraise um, because maybe they get something out of it. I know that's not why we're all involved with Dance Marathon, but your participants might want something in exchange for their fundraising. And that might be a t-shirt or an opportunity to go on stage. So making sure that you're thinking about that. Um, and then important to note at the bottom, as you are all leadership members of your team, um, your internal team should know what their in-event fundraising expectations are ahead of time. If this, if at the event, your committee members or chairs or even your directors are hearing about the fundraising asks for the first time and they you haven't explicitly told them, hey, this is what I need you to do, um, they might go do something else or they might not think that this is directed at them. So making sure that your in-event fundraising expectations with your inter internal team are clear, not only on how much do they need to fundraise, but also what is their role in engaging participants in fundraising will be really important. Um, this is a quick video. Shout out to Purdue. Not sure if any of them are on here, if I can get this to work. Uh, of course not. I'll come back to it. Um, but they do a really good job in this video of explaining what the bell means for their program. Um, so if we don't get to it, we'll make sure that it's associated with this recording. Um, next thing is once you've kind of laid the expectations, um, set a clear ask is making sure that they have resources and educate, are educated to fundraise. So if you've inspired them to fundraise and you've talked about the cause and you've given them an ask, but they don't know how to actually use the fundraising tools they have available to them, um, then that's where they're going to stop. They're going to be like, oh man, I really want to fundraise, but I don't really know how. Um, so walking them through how to find out, find and send their link. Um, this can be done on stage, this can be done ahead of time, this can be done in smaller groups, but just really make sure that people know how to get to their fundraising page. Um, providing a link or Dropbox of templates and graphics can be really important too. Um, and I called out here that you can use Donor Drive as a place to house your resources. So this little resource tab right here, um, you can upload Word documents and graphics so that participants, participants don't have to leave the Donor Drive site to go find these. They can click on that resources tab and they can find a graphic and they can download it and they can post it to their social media. Um, same thing with text templates. Um, really important that participants feel prepared and equipped to go out and fundraise. Having a fundraise resource, oh, that's meant to say table, having a fundraising resource table. So if you, you can easily say on stage like, if you don't know how to fundraise, head back to the table on the left side of the gym and they'll help you. Uh, making sure that that is something that's available to them. And then having internal team members or team captains gather with your teams and individuals um, to encourage them and to ask if they have any questions. And so if that's something that you can do ahead of time or afterwards, um, it's just saying like, hey, go find your team captain or go find your morale captain um, or having them go out and look for their people to just check in on them and say, hey, did you make the asks or do you need any resources to be successful with this fundraising push and help make sure that they're feeling good. Next thing um, is creating that environment of fundraising and giving them time. So I think this is a piece that gets missed really often is that we go up there and we're super excited to make an ask and we make that ask. And then immediately once the fundraising chair or whoever made this, the ask gets off stage, morale runs on stage and they're like, we're going to dance. And you're like, oh no, so close. Um, because they need time to make those asks. So if you've just asked them to reach out to five people, think about how long it takes to like think of five people, text them, call them and give them that amount of time. Um, Cause otherwise they're not going to do it. Because if you go up on stage and you're like, we're going to do the morale dance, they're going to be like, I love the morale dance. Let's do it. And they're not going to send out those asks. Um, so make sure after every single fundraising ask that you do from the main stage, you're giving them time to make those asks and it's incorporated into your timeline and you have the space to do it. And then create that environment. So if this is meant to be a fun, exciting, competitive fundraising ask and everyone's just kind of standing around, 
they're not going to get in the spirit of that. And so use your morale team, use your MCs to create that exciting fundraising environment and have them go and interact with people. I interact with people. One of my favorite things I've seen at a marathon is like the MCs get off stage, they go into the crowd and they like walk up to people and they're like, who'd you ask for a donation? Or like, I dare you to ask your best friend from high school. Um, and it creates that interactive and fun environment that people like want to be a part of. Um, if it's more sentimental or emotional ask, obviously you don't want to start like yelling from the main stage if people are like in a really emotional space. Um, so maybe take some time to be quiet, turn down the lights, play a, a slower song, um, and just let people kind of send out those asks and also reflect on what they've just heard um, or the experience that they've been having at the marathon so far. So I have a few examples here. Um, shout out to IEDM. Um, they do a really good job of creating interactive uh, experiences on stage for their fundraising asks. So um, this can look like, you know, creating a countdown if it's got a specific time that you can make the ask. Um, they also do a really good job of um, creating like competitive fundraising environments, but in a way that like people are having a lot of fun at the same time. So um, they had like a basic Google sheet that was updating in real time, different team donations. So they could kind of compete against each other. And every couple minutes, those um, team totals would refresh so that they could see, um, oh, team two is now ahead. And it was a team of all, you know, a mix of committee members and dancer teams so that they got to also get to know each other while they were doing this fundraising push and have a little bit of fun um, kind of working against each other. Um, and then also here, someone's ringing that bell um, and counting up. And it's a simple PowerPoint slide that has like one, two, three, four, all the way up to 100. Um, so every time the bell rang, someone at their entertainment station was clicking the next slide and it's counting up so that everyone in the room is participating and working towards that same goal um, and cheering on the person who's up there ringing the bell because they received a donation. So just some fun things that you can do to create that environment of fundraising and, and get your participants involved in it as well. And then lastly, stewarding and celebrating them. So um, as we just looked at inviting them on stage to be recognized or do something interactive, such as ringing that bell, um, maybe it's having a list of top fundraisers on the screen after the push or announcing the total raised or um, having MCs call out donations as they're received. You can do that by just having someone with donor drive admin open and looking at, you know, top fundraisers and big donations that are coming in and calling them out and inviting them up on stage. Um, using incentives for a specific push or for in event fundraising. So maybe your top fundraisers have already raised a lot of money, but if they raise a little bit more in event, they'll get a specific in incentive that can maybe motivate them to keep going and also say thank you for the fundraising they did during the marathon. And then really important here, um, making sure internal members are going around and thanking people in attendance. So like, if you're doing a fundraising push and someone just went on stage to ring that bell, as they're coming off stage, can someone be standing there saying, wow, congratulations, thank you so much for all you're doing? Or can they thank them on stage? Um, can you bring up a family after the push? Maybe it's the same family that made the ask and say, wow, it was really amazing to watch you all come together and thank you so much for all you do. Talk about the total raise during that push. Lots of different things you can do to, to steward and celebrate. And... I think that is, oh no, I have one more. Um, quick recap, really, because I think I've mentioned all of these things at one point or another, um, but do's and don'ts. So do definitely have a plan, create a script, make sure you know who is doing these things, what they're going to say, what's the ask, um, rehearsing it, super important. So they feel comfortable and confident. Um, again, plan to be flexible. Uh, you may have to adjust your event fundraising asks while they're happening because you need to raise more, just a little bit to hit your goal. Um, or maybe you had to move a different fundraising ask to later. So now this ask needs to be bigger than the you had originally anticipated. So plan to be flexible as with your event schedule. And then make it fun. It can be a lot of fun. It can be competitive. You can have a good time. Um, it doesn't have to be like, oh my God, we're fundraising again. It can be a lot of fun and enhance that participant experience, provide them with resources. Um, don't have awkward transitions. Like if people, if you haven't told them exactly what to do, um, it can get a little awkward and that people are like, so do I fundraise now? Do I fundraise later? 
someone else coming up on stage. So by saying like, all right, we're going to give you a few minutes to make this ask and we're going to play a song like that can just directly tell them what they're supposed to do next. Um, don't speak while no one's paying attention. If you're going up on stage and this is a really big fundraising ask for you, take the time to say, hey, can everyone come closer to the stage and wait for them to get there so that they can listen and hear you. Um, if there's other activities in the gym going on, maybe you stop those while the event fundraising is happening. So if everyone's playing basketball in the back of the gym, you say, hey, we're going to pause this game. We're going to go listen to the person on stage. Then we can go back to playing basketball after this section's over. Um, same concept. Don't immediately start another activity. Um, and don't think that you only have to focus on high amounts. So like activation of participants can be just as impactful as asking them to raise $100, asking them to raise two donations or asking them to receive maybe two donations could raise $200. Um, so really switch it up and don't be afraid to focus on smaller amounts because it really can add up um, in terms of overall impact. And then I know I have spent this entire section talking about event fundraising, but it's not the only important part of your event. It is just a really key piece to make sure that you're tying everything together and that your participants are having a good time. And that is the end of my in event fundraising section. Um, does anyone have any questions? Well, hopefully this was really helpful and you learned something. Um, highly recommend sharing this with your team members and then opening up conversations with your team and your advising teams, your cause partnership manager included, about what your specific programs and event fundraising plans could look like because um, it's not a one size fits all um, and you should really be building it in a way that is going to enhance your program and meet the goals that you've got set for yourself. So um, I know we love to connect with other programs, but and you can get really great ideas from other programs, um, but this should be a very unique to you our program um, design and something exciting that you can do to make it a little bit of your own. So you guys, I think, can head back to the main room and we will close out by some key takeaways and incentive. Thanks, everybody.